What is going on, everybody? So recently, I completed Prototype 1 and 2 on the RG Ally 100%. And these two games actually have a lot of issues on Windows devices. And today, I'm going to explain exactly how I got Prototype 1 and 2 to work so flawlessly. Well, there were a few hitches here and there, specifically for Prototype 2. But pretty much, I completed Prototype 1 and 2, which means I started the game. And for about a week or two, I didn't exit out the game. I just continuously played it, putting the ROG Ally into hibernation mode and just resuming the game whenever I had a chance. And it took about five days to complete Prototype 1 and six days to complete Prototype 2. And these two games are among my favorite. Out of all the years I've been playing video games, I absolutely love Prototype 1. And this was actually the first time I 100% completed Prototype 2. I've been holding off on it since I picked it up for the Xbox 360 and after the initial release to PC, I heard Prototype 2 had a few issues, specifically CPU related issues with Intel computers. And the same issues exist for AMD CPUs, but for most AMD CPUs, you can play Prototype 2 just fine. But specifically with the API in the ROG Ally, there are core issues with Prototype 2 and 1. And this is unfortunate. So the main thing this core issue causes are consistent crashes every 20 or so minutes. Now, sometimes the crashes will happen after one hour. But the crashes for Prototype 1 and 2 on pretty much any Windows device is prevalent and it is a huge issue that Radical Studios hasn't gotten a chance to fix because, well, they just don't make games like they used to anymore. And on the screen, I'm going to show you guys step by step exactly how to fix Prototype 1 and Prototype 2. And I did get these steps from a website and pretty much I created my own custom shortcut, copying the exe files path into the shortcut, as well as specific commands that limit your CPU's performance for that specific game to a certain amount of cores. And the best amount of cores to limit your CPU at would be four. Four with prototype one, I believe, and four with prototype two. And I'm gonna show you the exact code on the screen because if I said it, it wouldn't make any sense. And I'm gonna provide the link to the website I got the instructions to below, if I can find it because it has been quite some time since I finished prototype one and two, and I may have misplaced those links, but I'll try my best to provide them and I'll let you know if I do after recording this. But yes, after fixing Prototype 1 and 2, I play these two titles continuously on the ROG Ally without stopping it or restarting the system. I just charged the ROG Ally overnight or while I had some kind of break and simply woke it up from hibernation mode. And I resumed and hibernated the ROG Ally while playing Prototype 1 and 2 for each game about 36 times. Now that's a lot of times to test out the hibernation and resume function on this device. And I would say that Prototype 2 pretty much plays perfectly. Now, the reason I made a video about Prototype 1 and 2 is because they do have that CPU issue, but I feel like a lot of other games have that as well, especially while gaming on Windows handheld devices. Because for some reason, after waking up and resuming the RG Ally, after playing a game like Red Dead Redemption 2, sometimes there are a few glitches, like the audio not being as loud, or the game just stuttering a few times before finally smoothing out. But with Prototype 1 and 2, I didn't find any of those issues. I just continued the game and it played perfectly fine. Now this is incredible because Prototype 1 and 2 are my favorite games and only took about two hours to fix both of them, which is a load off because there are other handheld devices that require a lot more attention, research, and know-how. But with these two games, all I simply had to do was copy the designated code into the path of the shortcut. And I'm pretty sure most people know how to make shortcuts in Mac, Linux, or Windows. But I was actually astonished how well Prototype 1 and especially Prototype 2 played. But at first, Prototype 2, even with this shortcut fix, had some kind of FPS issue. And I'll provide the fix as well in this video. It's a substantially easier fix than the shortcut fix for Prototype 1 and 2. So after playing each game for around 15 to 20 hours, I'd say that after these fixes, Prototype 1 definitely does play a lot better than Prototype 2. And with every single side mission and main story mission, there weren't really any glitches that I can remember. Maybe there were a few missing audio pieces here and there, but I blame the game because I remember that happening with the Xbox 360 version. With Prototype 2, I had that FPS issue, and there were a few cutscenes that had strange FPS stuttering. But besides that, Prototype 2 played 
very well. In fact, sometimes it played better than part one. And I had an amazing time with these two titles, as I always do. But more so than ever because I figured out specific fixes to fix the FPS and resolution. And I'm not sure if everybody will run into this issue, but Prototype 1 definitely does have a resolution issue. So yeah, I highly recommend playing Prototype 1 and 2 on the RG Ally specifically because, well, it's a Windows device, so it's going to have its hitches here and there, but it plays exceptionally well on the RG Ally. And I got around two hours of gameplay at 1080p high settings with each game playing at around 45 to 60 FPS at all times. But more than anything, these games look fantastic on the 1080p screen on the RG Ally. And I think that is the definitive way to play these titles. Yeah, let me know if you guys played Prototype 1 and 2 on the RG Ally, and if this video helped you fix those games in particular. Let me know if I missed anything, and thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you have a good one. Later.